Welcome to the Lesbo and the Bean universe. Lesbo and the Bean. L-A-T-B. Lat B. Where mixed martial arts and the UFC get silly. Big silly. Buckle up and move your tray tables to their upright position. And please, somebody shut that baby up. It's time for Lesbo and the Bean. Welcome back. Welcome back. Episode 169 in with Les Bon and the Bean here. 69! Welcome back in the new year. Oh, what a year it's been. If you haven't caught up on our latest lap bees, you definitely should go back. Some fun facts we throw in, in there. Fun picks. Really surprised at how many high-level uh, podcasts actually reciprocated what we were saying here after the fact. Because I feel like we were out. A day, a couple days, hours before a lot of the big shows. You mean our best of 2018? Latbies, yes. The Latby Awards, yeah. Um, they went with a lot of the same picks, a very similar... I thought submission of the night, I thought we were going to be unique in that, due to the knee bar incident, and the fact that other people had those sharing the submissions of the year, and we also shared that, essentially... Wow, spot on here at Latby, spot on. And you know what? We rewatching them both. I liked them both for so many different reasons. I, I did think the Aljamain Sterling one was really cool, and the way he went about grabbing it and um, pulling it down, and I I thought Zabitz was really dynamic. And I wondered, did he spark that in Aljamain Sterling to make him his brain pull that out, or completely just how we're all connected? Um, was the thought just in the air and it was gonna it was all about a knee bar that night I feel like it is once it's in the air it's happened a few the times ether definitely so to speak it feeds off of each other the submission is known also as a knee bar or a Suliyov stretch Suliyov submission but again I'm also saying Aljamain Sterling the damage on the knee that happened I saw more so to Cody Stamen instead of Damian Brown. Either way, how have you been since we last um, got yeah, on? And FYI, if you follow us, I think it's Lesbo and the Bean at Instagram. Um, we have been slowly putting up pictures of all of our awards. So if you haven't listened to the entire Lat Bees or have no intention to, and you just have a short attention span, you can follow us there and check out some of those because I've been releasing them by the days. Good so. call. Good call. And follow us anywhere at Lesbo and the Bean for that matter. Very um, true. I am going crazy without fights. Uh, I kind of think this little break just proves that how much I enjoy fights every single weekend. Uh, it has been a tough one. We did have some international undercards, some Alaska scenes, some lower caliber stuff. It's fun to watch at wrestling state championships and stuff are going on as well. So I know my Instagram's full with a lot of highlights that I've been seeing out there. But I agree, there's nothing like the UFC. And the UFC has been making some news since we've taken a little bit of a break. And it's been nothing but good news as far as I'm concerned. I do think we have Bellator next weekend. Fedor versus Bader I don't is feel next weekend. I don't feel comfortable betting those type of situations with the fans. Maybe the main event because they're both UFC That's what I was thinking. Fighters. Maybe Wednesday we would just give our thoughts. You know I've been on Bader since the beginning. True. That was a good pick. That was an pick. office pool. If I would have stuck with um, the Lat B office pool once we're a big, huge podcast and we have people working for us and I would have picked something in a... Right, that early? That would have been a good... Like, I agree. Football? You would have got, you got good money on it. I should have put money on it. Oh, yeah. Live and you learn. Yeah, live and learn. So, maybe we'll just break down a couple of those fights. There's just, it's so, such new talent at times in there that crazy stuff happens at Bellator that I just don't feel comfortable with. And did you, off topic real quick, um, past stuff, mm -hmm. did you look at the Teshin Floyd fight ever? Woo! That happened right at the end of the new year. We haven't had a chance to talk about it, but yes, I did catch it, and... Do you feel like the fix is in? I think we've in? had a chance to talk about it, maybe. We just have chose uh, not to. It was prior to. We had more to talk about. Yeah, I agree with that. So <laughs> Now we don't have any fights until the 14th or 19. something. 19. <laughs> we still got a while. But do you think the fix was in? A lot of people claiming that, it's, uh, that it was Robert Black. Who is that? Robin Black? This is what I have to tell anyone, really, about fix, no fix. I don't care. I don't care. It means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. They they might as well have gone in there and danced for the stars. Like, it it meant nothing. It was an exhibition match. It was just, yeah, 
They they might as well have done jujitsu well, against each other. They I might mean, as well have wrestled each other. That was Floyd, Mike Tyson, Mayweather in there. I mean, he was knocking that kid around like he was the Hulk. I have to be honest with the fans. I did not watch it. Not even the gifts. It was only a round I long. I only saw one gif of Teshin sitting on the ground where he looked like he was sad. Oh, wow. There's multiple. He was knocked down three times in a round, I believe before the three-minute mark. And a couple of the punches, even Robert Black ended up breaking it down and his sense took down his prior comments because Joe Rogan talked to him and was like, dude, those punches landed. And uh, if we've learned anything here at Lappy is... Joe Rogan has been turned to the dark side. We know that he's... CIA? I I don't know if it's CIA, (laughs) NRA, FBI. I know the NRA. (laughs) Um, Ted Nugent was in there talking to him not long ago. I know Kanye's about to make an appearance on Joe Rogan. How do you feel about that? I'm kind of excited about it. I'm wondering what Truth's going to put on and if they're just going to pass out Kanye. I was about to say, They're going to Glenn Beck. Joe Rogan, chill. I know, the shill cast. That's what I was thinking. Um, And I still listen. I still listen to Joe. I criticize him, but I'm just going to (laughs) say. I'm going to watch it. I'm I'm going to watch it for sure. I still like Joe. He's still, because of Joe, the amount of other people I've learned to follow. But then I wonder, is like Joe Rogan a form of Oprah? You know, the same way that like Oprah has like Dr. Oz and Dr. Phil and, you know, whatever people that come off Oprah and they all become success and start selling people things. Um, that's kind of like if you look at Joe Rogan, his people that are like other than Brian Redman, Red Band, Brennan Schaub, but Brian I... Callen, Eddie Bravo, sure. uh, Tom Segura, uh, Brett, Burt. Burt Crusher, Crusher, Ari Shafir. Um, they're all like kind right. of like a squad. Right. And the, the only death lady. Squad, only I think lady. that's what they're called. Only lady. Christina P. Nope. Oh, when Cummings. Whitney, Whitney Cummings. Cummings. But she dated Schwab for a little bit. Yeah. That was interesting when they talked about Schaub. that. Shop, B shop. Sorry, that's so not B shop. Not Schwab. Oh my bad. <laughs> <laughs> you would know here. I less in the bean. B and R. B shop translator. Brennan Shop. If you're, um, he has a new podcast called. Oh. <laughs> I know. I shouldn't give. We give out podcasts here. Like we, we do. We don't want to lose any of our audience. But. Uh, Him and Theo. Ding and the King. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about that name, but I, I'm critical. Then what can I be saying here at Lesbo and the Bean? Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Good point, yeah. So back to the MMA news. We do like to throw a little bit of shade over that way whenever we can. Fun fights being made as of late. A lot of, I'm going to go with the recency bias and know what the most profile one that has been as of late. And we'll go back and talk about some later ones. But John Bone Jones looking to get back in there very quickly against Anthony Smith. That's set from a month from now. John Jones saying that he didn't take maybe a little more after a month, but soon enough as it is, John Jones saying he didn't take any damage, which he didn't. He came out unscathed. So the fact that Anthony Smith is even calling him out, of course he's gonna. That makes total sense. But uh, it's either him or who's the other... I don't want to throw hate to Anthony Smith or tons of shade, but... (laughs) Do you feel like this is very similar to the DC fighting Derek Lewis decision where it's just like, give me this guy. I'll walk through and make a big paycheck, get my role back on because John Jones has probably had a certain lifestyle and then went without working for a certain amount of time. And he's just like, I can take out Anthony Smith easy. Do you think there's some part of him that thinks that? I do think John Jones thinks that and I do think it's very Cormier asked where he's like, I can have a broken hand. It's Derek Lewis. Mm. Now, the difference there is Anthony Smith has actually put together a pretty good run as of late, and it looked better than he ever has. His chin finally has been under him. He's one of those guys that moved up from 85 to 205, and has only looked good. Then again, though, the people he's beating hasn't been the highest caliber. I know he just got through his last opponent fairly quickly. Who was it, though? I can't think. Ozdemir. Ozdemir, which kind of was a flash in a pan as well, fighting fairly chinny fighters. When we look back at it, DC also ran through Ozdemir fairly easily. Really? They all knocked out, um, who's the guy, I always forget his name, out of Europe somewhere. The black guy, the poster Jimmy boy. Jimmy Manuel. Jimmy Manuel. They yeah. all knock out Jimmy Manuel. They get the Manuel treatment, though. They're like, oh, oh he's the next in line. And then you see how big of a leap it is from one to two in these divisions. Um, speaking of John Jones, what about the Luke Rockhold fight? 
Any more interest in that over Smith, or you think all comers bring it? So that's, I from what I hear, the Anthony Smith fight is pretty much signed already. So Rockhold is trying but to make a haven't we just it. heard that from Dana? <laughs> yeah, well, true, true, true. <laughs> UFC rule, new, rule yeah. number one. Yeah. Don't trust Dana. So I like that Rockhold fight as well, especially because it's got the AKA ties. But phew, 205, Rockhold's chin's probably going to do better than it ever has. Jiu-jitsu wise, John Jones has shown nothing but good stuff on there. Striking wise, I'm gonna give the advantage to Jones, so I don't think Rockhold gets it done. But he's a worthy opponent. He's fought the caliber of fighter too. A super fight for Jones. He's a big name. It's not like a former champion. And I'm interested with Luke at 205. What about if he's a lot less chinny with a little more wada in his body? I completely agree. And he was an 85 champ as well. But isn't it kind of weird? The UFC is kind of letting us know. This is what I realized with the last fight. They're letting us know this pulsing factor of the drug that is going to be in his body for seven years. They're like, this drug is allowed to stay in Jones's. If it comes up in any test, and it could be a high amount or a low amount because of this pulsing. Right. So if this drug comes up in the next seven years, turn a ball, which is there any opportunity of Jones fighting longer than seven years? Let's be real. Probably not. Probably not. Probably not. So, probably not. So it's like... What a really... Sh- and they'll deal with that bridge when they get to it because they'll sure. say technology is that much better. So we're now we can go into his, you know, the microbes of his... And so that's why it still keeps coming up in tests. So it's just really interesting. The UFC has let us know this athlete's allowed to test what um, whatever. So then I wonder how long until certain other athletes get that same amount of attention. Or are they already? Like, I is that like the they con- already are. We've seen it with Connor. Do you think we- he has the turnaball treatment? Yeah, 100%. Hundred percent. How do you feel about uh, lead alpha male striking coach uh, training Connor? Oh, I mean his son. I mean his son hitting the pads. <laughs> it was an alpha male coach. Oh, I that didn't was a joke see it. At alpha yeah, male. I didn't see it. Oh, he was just hitting pads with his kid, and uh, it was a funny joke for me. Oh, because like it MMA looks like like alpha favor, male, like favor, a favor guy. <laughs> swinging just swinging at the pads. That's funny. <laughs> that is funny. But Connor, you know, he has to come up usually. He got another baby. D got another baby. He had a healthy another baby. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Good for Connor. Right. Good for him. How do you feel about the third baby he might have over in Ireland? Um. Any confirmation or anything on that? Not officially, or? but that was the when drug was last charges. Heard about it. A few months ago, when that account for that young lady was deleted, but she has a lot of ties to a lot of gangs, which was the guy he supposedly supposedly beat up because that guy was talking shit and telling him. Connor, you got to come take care of your kid. You got to take care of your kid. You better take care of your kid, Connor. He's your kid, and he's like, I don't even know that girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, I am a D fan, D Devlin, all day. I, I only think Connor was a virgin until he met D, and wow. then he had two babies. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. Good to know. I think, like we've said before, it is a wild stallion tend to roam free. Jones versus Smith. Okay, I talked about that. I have to put a check mark by it on my list because I actually did homework for you guys this time because I'm like, we got to bring something. It's such a desperate fight week without UFC fights. But what about if everyone's sitting around waiting for Lesbo and the Bean? <laughs> well, I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. You said the biggest high profile fight. I thought that was weird. I thought you were going to start it with the real biggest profile fight that's signed and really ready to go Usman versus Woodley. I was about to actually get to that. And- say that's official right that, that is, officially is really com- official what a kerfluffle what a bad marketing i mean fight of the year the fight that everybody wants to watch t wood covington everybody knows it everybody knows it this is just has a bit of a decision city sleep fest all over neither of these guys come to bang anymore you know we trust usman here he's finally getting his shot how do we really feel here at Lab B it's now that time. we have? It was supposed to be somebody else. He was supposed to have a till fight first or something. I agree with that. There was some one more fight why Usman fought Covington, and I... then we'd get to this. Then we'd get to this. We knew it was the inevitable. Agreed. But then we'd get Is to this. Is it too soon? I don't like it for Usman. I agree yet. right now. I almost feel like Woodley is the better version of Usman everywhere. I agree with that. 
It may, the only thing I think Usman may be better at or what I used to think was cardio, but of lately I've been a little like, e, car, Woodley's cardio has been getting a little better and I've noticed Usman's taking a dive Woodley a little. Woodley has gone to five rounds how many times? Yeah, you're right. Uh, like, Usman's done it a couple times. So, I yeah, I don't think the cardio, I think it would get there a couple more till ESPN profile five rounders get those rounds under him. Boom, then he's getting shot. I do think it's a bit early, but... Right now, I mean, we're kind of, we have our hands tied behind our back. I feel like we have to go with Usman. You know you got to trust us. I know. It's so weird. I wasn't thinking I'd have to make this decision for a fight because I really like both fighters. And I don't know if I can go with Usman here. I don't know. I'll have to get to that when I... When the fight comes about. But, but I did want to bring up two points about it and ask you what you think. And one of them is kind of controversial, but whatever. You know, Woodley always talks about the UFC being racist. Do you think Usman and Woodley are too much alike and draw a similar crowd? Like if you're a hardcore wrestler and you like this style of fighting, you like one, like you probably like both of them. I tend to like both of them. I don't, you like Usman, you don't like Woodley. I do like them, but I also understand that even for me at times, when it turns into a tail Woodley type of fight, it's boring. I don't care who it is. They're not going to get into crazy scrambles. They're both high enough caliber that they're either going to stalemate in a position or one's going to get the advantage immediately and then it's going to be a riding out for five rounds. So I just see it being a drawn out fight where the heat in both fights, I feel like Covington is in that same boat, but the heat as far as the fans is, is Covington. That's why it's such a blunder to me. That was going to be my second question. Do you think there could be any truth to not just Woodley being like a thorn in Dana's side? We all know how he feels about Woodley. And I think Usman's a very similar thorn in his side with his 30%. And he has kind of a similar, like you're saying, in quote to the fan, boring style. But the weird part is that Covington, do you think because of how big his star is getting and the meeting Trump and whatever, he tried to play hardball with negotiations and the UFC put the kibosh on it with this? The same, like they pulled a Cejudo on Covington? Covington is out of ATT. Damn Lambert is his manager. I mean, he's a highly paid guy. We just saw Lambert putting the belt around Noons. Noons. I mean, there's something. They got backdoor extra deals, but they're smart about their camp and everything, where everything's close to the chest at ATT. Do you think that then um, maybe because ATT is smart enough with their people, they're holding Colby and saying, let one of these guys cancel out the other guy because you don't want to go against both of them. I I could see that play for them and then playing a longer game type situation in there. But what I'm also getting to where I feel like I kept saying this point is all of the hype for Covington people are going to say when that comes around with Woodland or Us- or Woodley or Usman, they're going to say, we just saw this fight. I don't want to see it again. And it's going to lose all the steam that it's had for this entire year. For the Covington? I don't know. I think Colby is good enough. And especially if he fights either one of those guys, this is the yeah. smart thing for the UFC. Okay. Another controversial decision. Okay. With it. Because Covington is who he is with the MAGA fighter and being <laughs> the Make America Great Again and going to visit Trump, it sets up a perfect storyline for whether he's fighting Usman, the African. The Nigerian. A Nigerian American. Or Woodley, the friggin' like ghetto from the streets American. Where is he gangster. from? Atlanta. Yeah, crazy. So it sets up Missouri. against this. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> like, look how racist Atlanta. Um, he, he raps in Atlanta. And so it just it makes for an interesting storyline to set up the black versus white and the blah 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 against either guy, but you really can't do that storyline twice. So you kind of and Woodley Good set call. himself up as Black Panther. It makes me wonder now saying this to you and talking it out. It's like gosh, the UFC is almost like wrestling. Like they've set us up and we buy it. Well, like, that's Lambert. <laughs> Lambert has his own like wrestlers that he even sponsors as well. He's deep into the. the into the wrestling world as far as uh, WWE style wrestling. I believe it. No, he is. He's yeah, yeah like he it. does it. So, and Covington, I mean, if you want to see someone taking the WWE narrative and making a career off of it, Colby Covington has done that, but he's also won the fights. So, you do got to do both. And it is a bit harder at, in this game. So, semi excited for that. It's got to be done. We're going to have a fun breakdown for that, or will we? Another fun one that we have officially is Jeremy Stevens, Zabit, Sheripov, Magomedov.
Sure, strike. Have we talked about this a little bit? I think we have yeah, a little bit, but it's or maybe we just posted about it. We might not have discussed it. We might have discussed it in private. I don't personal. remember if we discussed it with Yao. It, I could be wrong on that. Another one, Tisha Torres, Li Ziang, the Chinese fighter that's on all okay. the juice. Okay, okay. And uh, Shurkanov, OSP, Gina Mazzani, Chie Song. Chie Song. I actually have. A fan question. Oh! Fan question. I love it. Let's see what you think. So, from at Jimmy Dunphy on Twitter, he says, not having the 165 pound division, um, we asked uh, what or who is the dumbest thing going on in the UFC right now. That's what we put out on Okay, that's what Les Bones would be. Twitter's a hard um, platform for us, but... Whatever. We try. We try. We try. We try and reach out. So, uh, who or what is the dumbest thing going on in the UFC right now? And uh, Jimmy Dunphy, uh, at Jimmy Dunphy, wrote, not having the 165-pound division. It's clear to me, anyway, that they are going to run it back with Connor and Khabib. The favorable outcome is Connor to win, and that sets up for a 165-pound super fight with GSP, where the winner would have the first triple champ. Any thoughts on that? I like it. I think he has very valid points. And I could see that happening. We have such an interesting year ahead of us. I don't see how that happens. To me, if Connor beats Khabib, which if this is all rigged, he will. <laughs> if Connor beats Khabib, they fight a trilogy fight. And they Absolutely. both make killer money. Absolutely, but I just don't see Khabib losing that if it's not. Yeah, I see. I think GSP Throne. is, he's even after the, he's kind of out of talks. He needs to start talking to somebody else. I think Woodley, he needs to start talking to other fighters if he wants to set up the super fight. I kind of think there's enough going on in the 155 to keep fights a come in that are money fights that do over a million pay-per-view. The 155 division's unreal. It's unreal, but I do feel like that there is going to be other stars that we haven't seen coming out. We have kids coming down. I just saw a wrestling video, Highlight Wrestling, where there was a high schooler who Iminari ruled or reverse iminari Maybe Ryan Hall did because that wasn't apparently an Iminari. But he did that over like Granby's shoulder, sweeped in for an outside single and took it down. That's jujitsu blending over into high school wrestling. That's what's happening because of the UFC. We have stars on the way, ladies and gentlemen. We've said it. Yeah. Crispy. I, a lot of them at 155. Gillespie, yeah. Gillespie. Yeah. A lot of them. I mean, even at 205, I still think Dominic Reyes is a diamond I in the I think Dominic rough. Reyes is awesome. Woo! I think you're so right. And you know what's so funny? That body style that he has is very... Why? Like, yeah. Think of that John Jones, but give Reyes again. Give him five more fights before John Jones. Oh, Maybe yeah. three I more like fights. Dominic Reyes. I think he's awesome. I think um, we, you know, Zabit, Israel Adesanya, Sugar Shane. And look at these different level. Let's talk about Shevchenko. Let's talk about, you know, like. Nunes like, is up Nunes. there now. Let's talk about Nina and how much her game has changed. Like, you, I know you're high on Nina most of the time. But just in three fights, if this is how much somebody who is an athlete that can absorb this information as much as everyone hates it, let's just talk about it. It's happening, so let's just fucking discuss it. Hardy coming into the UFC. What's a super athlete like this? How is he going to absorb UFC? What is his first fight going to be like down to his fifth fight? I'm interested. I'm it. curious about this. So, hey, you guys, whether it's happening or not, and if you want to throw in Ostevich to act like you're some fucking champion of women, whatever you have to do to feel better about yourself. It's happening. Right. Let's move on. But, like, hey, let's say you see somebody that you don't like get beat down in the octagon by somebody else who is a trained athlete. How much sweeter is that all of a sudden? How much more are you like, yeah? Like, oh, you thought you were so good. You thought you could stroll up out of football sure. and just burn and chop somebody? <laughs> <laughs> so, the interesting thing is I think this goes back to UFC 1 or 2 where we're going to have a new renaissance with these super athletes coming in. Where, like Joe Rogan and a lot of other coaches have, not Joe Rogan, a lot of coaches that have went on Joe Rogan and... Uh, People in the game have said, like, sometimes the people with all of the physical skill and where everything comes easy are the easiest to overcome. Because once they hit that first wall, the first Matt Brown that doesn't go away the first time you kick him in the head, what happens? These guys aren't used to adversity. Yeah, they'll get blow out two or three fights because they're that much better. But when you get in that top 10, 
you're not blue. They're also super athletes at that. Point. I totally agree. But so I, I also love it. think what's gonna happen is less and less mothers are gonna let their kids play football. So we're gonna get that echelon of men. Like that's why we talk about the heavyweight division being so weak. Because if any guy's that big, they go and play freaking football and make real money. So once the moms start seeing any of respectable guys like Tyron Woodley that are like good role models, and moms are like, oh. Maybe my son can do that. Maybe he can go make money doing that. Less head trauma. I always had it the other way. I thought fighting was more head trauma, but a little education. And I'm like, whoa, NFL football is way more head trauma for my child. Oh, maybe I'll let my kid go do jujitsu, wrestling, one of these things that isn't an impact sport yet. And right. then they train for UFC later on. Now we know they train with less and less sparring. We're seeing the TJ Dillashaw rule. Um, so I just... I think we're going to start seeing a whole different caliber, even heavy guy athlete. A new where, renaissance, dare I say. You're so right. And I, I all the hate that the UFC got in 2018, I look back at the numbers, I look back at the fights we had, I look back at a lot of shit going on, and I just feel like unnecessary hate that it got. Because Connor, like, everybody, Connor saved the day. No! It was good with or without Connor, like, what, right. seeing he just Connor get, get it dominated faster. for that amount of time and doing me, 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 me. <laughs> <laughs> so, have you taken a look at the ESPN deal? I know that their schedule just dropped recently, and we got a, you got to get another subscription service if you're going to want to watch some of these fights, because my fight pass all of a sudden barely means fucking anything. Or lesbian only being, guess what? I got that. Woo! I got that. We were all right. Well, we're going to be taking care of. But either way, somebody I actually who called and rearranged with my horrible cable company, who I'm not going to give a shout out to. I rearranged with them because um, I you I rearranged with them of recent and was like, yeah, I'll go up to that package for the FS1 for the last amount of time that we had it. Now then I just dropped that and the money I saved, I still saved five bucks off adding the app to uh, the thing, and I can throw it right to the TV. So done and done. <laughs> We'll be able to see all them fresh fights. We'll be able to watch PVZ versus I was divisional tour. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I was worried about. Yeah, that's that's it. it. That's it. <laughs> but in general, how do you feel that the lineup that has come about looks? What's your prognostication on that? Um, five and a half months. And in five and a half months, we're only going to have two weeks without fights. Woo! You know the ladies are loving it. <laughs> <laughs> they heard about the schedule and then were like, what? They were like, yeah. Oh, oh, this bullshit. Oh. But I do think, though, having me around the house over the holidays at times, it's like, don't you have fights to do sometime? I'm like, oh, you said it. You said it, not me. I was getting questions. Yeah, like, I was oh. gonna, I was just going to ignore the fights tonight, but since yeah. you pointed it out, okay. I might as well watch it now. <laughs> <laughs> You're the one who pointed it out. Um, Something coming up pretty close, so I feel like we should talk about it and discuss and you kind of brought it up last time, and I hadn't watched any of the videos, but the closer it gets, there's more and more videos. <sighs> TJ, frail? Is he looking frail? I love this because I got a little bit of shade on the Twitterverse for reposting a <laughs> shit post. It was a shit post, and I tend to do that at Zoltanite, at The Bean, on <laughs> Twitter. It was me po- reposting, retweeting of TJ's most recent post with Chito Vera. Right alongside him at Team Evolution, which I absolutely love. but it That's was good a, news for the Chito. future for one of our favorite underdogs. Betting-wise. Uh, but it was then TJ Dillashaw next to a skeleton because people are already saying that he is 10 pounds away from 200 or 125 pounds and he's already starting to look thinner. I would agree with that. I don't think he looks bad yet, but he will make weight, but he's going to look worse than he's ever looked. He's put on so much muscle because he keeps saying, I've made that weight in high school and college before. You weren't the TJ of then to now look at the size difference. It's big. It's big. I have to be honest. I think he already looks a little worse than he does when he weighs in at 135 right now, which makes me think he's just on weight already. He's not even going to fuck around with trying to dehydrate with a cut. And that's the thing that's going to make the difference. So Hudo is going to go in with still X amount of wrestling weight to lose. Whereas TJ's walking around right now at 125. He's walking around at Bruce Lee muscle mass, you know, where right. he's like, I have 0.02% fat, like where your body couldn't do it for long. But if you supplement it right and keep your liver and kidneys clean. What it- do you mean? Supplement liver and kidneys clean. <laughs> 
Team Elevation. I really no, it's Team Training Lab. Oh, why do I keep the Elevation? Because it used to be Elevation. Okay, he used to be at Elevation. It's Team Train. He's Training Lab. I think it's with Cubs Swanson. T R E I G H N I N G Training Lab and uh, Cubs Swanson, uh, Cheeto Vera, the guys that they're training with the doctors. It really looks like next level shit. And I have to say. In my pound for pound, what I always thought pound for pound meant, because I've seen so much argument about it of recent, I thought if you took this fighter and made them any weight, they would win. That's what I thought pound for pound. I meant. would agree. It's the most all well around. Yeah, like fighter. if you took John Jones right. and put him at like in people that call John Jones the best. What I thought pound for pound meant, if you make him one twenty five, he beats everyone, everyone at 125. I would if agree with that. You make him one fifty five, he beats everyone. To me, I think it's so easy to see that if you put TJ Dillashaw at any weight, he beats everyone. He's my pound for pound. I think that's crazy, and I know it's controversial. It is controversial. But I think if you put him at any weight, I don't know whose skill set, whose ring IQ, whose... Even I rewatched that... Um, I think Max is up there. I agree with you, but I... I no, even but, rewatched Max but I gotta amazing say, too. I think it's true because the controversy is, it just came up, John Jones talking about it, that he was overtopped by Daniel Cormier, and I would agree. I think the pound for pound might be John Jones. I don't think so. Only because once you have that much times, <laughs> and you, and this is the thing. Okay, let's take out, let's say John Jones never failed a drug test. Okay, I put him in the conversation, and he could be in total talks uh, for it. He's never lost still to this point. Right. Would John Jones at 155 beat Khabib? At 155? I don't know if his style would, whereas TJ has that wrestling to negate it a little bit. If he was a 155 pound. So, I think John Jones has a wrestling too, though. I know. He has that crazy, what, Gre- a, Greco-Roman, yeah, like, totally a, different he long was, leg. He was still good. At, he was still a state-level wrestler. I just, and, and, but I just love this talk and the people that should be in it when I think of it. Even if you just took their skill set. Right. Cormier's up there for sure. If he's any weight... I don't know. I don't know. I if you if Cormier's less weight, I don't know who he he's kinda like Cejudo. If exactly. he's a one twenty five er but I don't put Cejudo in the talks of best. I agree. Around. I agree. Cejudo isn't up there, but I do put DC because of the people that he's been able to defeat time and time again. That does but play a role. Then he's like gotten murked on TJ's loss. TJ lost to like uh, controversially to Dominic Cruz, which most people don't even think he lost. But he also got knocked out by Dodson. Flat. Yeah. So and the other thing that's never that happened. I have to say about um, I rewatched the Cody fight, the uh-huh. original where he got where I remember watching it originally. Like, damn, TJ almost got stopped. Yep. But he kind of had his composure pretty well he and gets right up back and up and like, yeah, I was yeah. kind of like after rewatching that, I just rewatched it. Oh, nice! It's um, a fun one. It's a great one to watch. I am, and this is what I love about this show too that I just have to shout out and pat myself on the back. It's all about change here. It's all about growth and change. I used to hate TJ, and I am such a huge fan of his now. He, what a special guy. He, but he reminds me when I compare his ring IQ, John Jones. I think he has that John Jones ring IQ. He knows where what he to changes, do to win. changes a game plan in there. I know what you're talking about, he, John Jones. John Jones. I got gotcha, you. <laughs> I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. I know those alpha male rumors. I know where it came from. Who taught who? Speaking of goat talk, pound for pound talk. Amanda Leon, she uh, has to be up there easily, bar none. She's been, she has some of the uh, highest caliber women of all time on her mantle. Like if, if she were a caliber. dude, does she beat all those dudes we just talked about? She's uh, a pretty no. bomb ass. She's a black belt. Do we have distinguish? Do we have two distinguished categories though? Do we? Have I feel. I feel like it's MMA, MMA, and WMMA. Yeah, we could. I feel like we do because. No, if we turn her into a guy, like all those guys have that it's type of power. It's kind of more fun if we WMMA because then Ron Rousey's still a goat. Yes, that is still <laughs> viable Joanna for her time. is a goat still. Very viable. She still Shevchenko has time. Shevchenko is a goat. I we can't think, call her a goat yet if we're just talking about both men and women. I think the one who overtops them all if we have a WMMA category is Leon herself. For sure. I don't think that Hyborg's as high as, I, high as I thought it was. Just because, again, she hasn't fought that long in the UFC. And the people she's fought in the UFC, other than my girl Leslie Zith, which we all know was early. I mean, she hasn't beat the toughest challengers. You know who she's very similar to? Anyone that wants to argue Cyborg being a pound for a pound is, would you put Stephen Thompson in a pound for a pound talk? 
No. And if you want to take a similar, like, wow, he was undefeated from the time he was 16. He won 50 matches. He got into the UFC. He only lost once. And this time, like, blah, 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 blah. Very similar to Stephen Thompson. But he, you're just not in those talks. you got to win against some of those people. You can't just go against the good people. I would agree with that. And I do But think... I love fucking Cyborg. It doesn't take away how amazing she is. Oh, I agree. And I'm going to watch every single fight. I mean, her and Gabby Garcia are going to go rampage in Japan after her contract's up. That's going to be Brutskis out there because I I don't know if I necessarily see Cyborg staying around. All she's done is complain about her UFC contracts and how she's always been screwed over. But Christiana Cyborg tends to do that. She always feels like she's underpromoted. That was one of my predictions for 2019 on Lesbo and the Bean Lap B Awards. I feel like you are speaking the truth, Sue saying. Um, staying on kind of, see if we can stay on some breadcrumb of um, questions. What do you think Amanda's next fight should be? Chris? No? Yes? Well, worse, as we were talking about earlier with UFC making a bad move, Leon herself saying two more years until she Cyborg has a chance. No way. Cyborg can't get two years worth of fights in. Don't you think um, the Megan Anderson fights there for Cyborg were there without a belt? A hundred percent. Yeah, Easy. I think that's fine. Easy with them killer toes. And if uh, Amanda goes out and fights one more time this year and then trains for Cyborg, it might be a year and a half. She could be... <sighs> you know what? This is what Amanda Nunes does. 100% of the time, you can probably listen back to all of our tapes. She wins her fight. We're fans. Then she says some dumbass shit, and then we can't stand her again. And this is kind of the two-year thing is one of those dumbass things. 100% right? It's she such is a bad just the call. queen of putting her foot in her mouth. And she's done nothing but great things. And we were like, yay, finally. Her partner, again, Asnaroff, mm -hmm. made us tons of money. If we would have stayed on that train, it's either all of them or none here. Ah, Lesbo and the Bean. La Lesbo sticks to that. And if you're all in with that. If you were camp, riding American Top Team that day. Exactly. That would have been good on you. Would have been making some money. I like how they don't fight the same time. They fight like within the same week and or two of each other. It's so smart. smart. We've seen the Pettis brothers and a lot of other guys have issues. Where yeah. all of a sudden it's a chain of events that starts to... Can I tell you what more. I want next? Let me hear it. My Amanda fight isn't Shevchenko and it's not Cyborg. Hey, ladies, stay in your own weight divisions and do something there. The last thing I want to see is my girl Shevchenko look like a hypocrite by delaying her own weight class for moving on after all that stuff going Great on call. with Montano. So stay there, girl. Let Amanda do her thing. Let her enjoy her two belts. Blah, 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 blah. Amanda, Holly Holm, 135. Let's do this shit. Or I don't even care. Um, What's the... Cat's going to run back that. I think, this is what I think. Cat, uh, Megan Anderson, don't even have to run that back. Cat, Holly Holm. Or Amanda Holly Holm. If she wants to take further time off and then the winner fight Amanda. That's totally fine fights with me. Either one of those women against Amanda, I'm stoked more on than Chris Cyborg right away. I see, I see a point for that. I totally agree. Cyborg as well with her complaining has kind of put herself in a... In a bad spot as well. I think the Brazilian women in general, they all seem the same game plan. I'm like, I'm on your side. Ugh. Uh, well, Brazilian now I'm soft shooing out of the room. Jose Aldo. <laughs> Does he do that too? Where yeah. you're like, I'm on your side. Uh, Ugh. And then he's like, no, I'm not going to. No one else deserves a shot. I'm just going to hold it. Uh, okay. Jose Aldo turned. Uh, yeah, definitely. I'm so glad role. you said that because then I can stay on this breadcrumb and ask you about this. Okay. Jose Aldo versus Moicano. And Dana White threw a little shade about it. He wanted it to be a five round, but it's going to be a three round instead. Because Aldo. Thoughts? Aldo specifically said he wanted it. And Dana White said to himself, well, Jose Aldo gets what Jose Aldo wants, right? That was a bit of shade that he and threw He's out. like, we would have wanted a five round fight. We would have made a main event all day. Agree. But I think that just holds true as to kind of the diminishing we've seen from Burrell and Aldo. They had their prime. They had their peaks. They were pre-USADA. Is that in Brazil? That may pay a factor, but Jose Aldo's been in some of the most brutal fights ever. He's in the Hall of Fame for sure later on. Moicano's a tough fight. I just feel like a three-round fight by far, by far favors Jose Aldo because he's one of those guys that'll give up around three, around four, and make it really, really close because his gas tank, where in a three-rounder, he's got enough. 
he's got more than enough to be able to let out power strikes where I think Moicano, that's the way he you gotta get him out of there. He looked amazing in there against Jeremy Stevens. Yeah. And that was a is that a five rounder? I think it's but it was quick. Three, it was quick. He looked beautiful. It just I think Max Holloway makes people look so bad that people forget what a monster and for all intents and purposes, I you know how they most fights when somebody wins, you're like replay that back nine times out of ten they win. I don't think that about Conor McGregor versus Jose Aldo. I agree with that. And I would love to see that Conor McGregor Jose Aldo fight. We, we, we don't talk about. This no one is talks the two about. things that I think Conor McGregor, and it seems good for Conor McGregor in my opinion. Max Holloway and Jose Aldo moving up to 155 to fight McGregor, in my opinion, are both good fights for McGregor better than any other fights in his division because every other fight in his division, somebody either is a good, good wrestler or a good, good jujitsu, and Connor has an eh ground game. I think Max Holloway and Jose Aldo, even though they both have sufficient, if not good, if not great ga- ground games, they're both standing bangers, which is beneficial to McGregor, which gives us a Mac fight. So in my opinion, those are the two guys you want you call up to 155 for your money fight if you're looking to have a shot to win. I mean, because I don't think he beats anyone else. I don't think he beats Poirier. Right. I don't think he beats and this is all controversial. Very. I don't think he beats Poirier, Ferguson, Khabib, uh who else is at 155? Eddie Aldo, left. You just said but well, he's a he moved up, right. yeah. Um but there's a there's other murders. Where I don't think I. It's questionable if he beats Kevin Lee. It's questionable if he beats uh, Barboza. Like those murderers are all murderers. Row. So. Murderers row at one fifty five. Hooker's in there, even though he just lost. <laughs> the, you know Maybe the same thing hooker. happened to our Daniel Hooker. Hooker that happened to our um who just wrote some weird stuff on Instagram. He's from Texas. Texacutioner. Mike Vick. My, yeah, or He's got a fight James coming Vick. up. James Vick. Yeah. Who did he just uh, sign about with? Did I just see his names on a sign about? I think you're right, but I don't remember right now. I don't now. remember the fight because it didn't look that profile to me. It didn't seem like a really high one, but it seemed like a tough one for Vick either way, especially after what we've seen as of late. It was a quick one. But Gaethje, we haven't talked about Gaethje in a while. He's been picking fights the all over as well. 155-er, murderer was row. I would agree. Connor might not be able to. But Leg Ga- kicks? I, did the bean predict a long time ago that Connor might want, would want Gaethje if to dependent on that fight? With him. I still think. It could be a shot. There's a chance there. Well, there's a chance, but if we're talking stylistic matchup, something that Connor wants, as you're saying with Aldo, a, a striker, you don't want someone to go to the ground with him. Gaethje's that fighter. Gaethje's a guy who will strike with you regardless. So, Connor, I always feel like, feels an advantage of guys that move forward. That's Gaethje. Like,. That's it. Yeah. He, he moves forward. So I think that fight could still come about and it would be profile fight for both fighters. I like it. I, I like anything. And I, I really, though, honestly, if Connor never fights again, I'm not like crying. There's so much great going oh, on in there's MMA. So much. There's so much good. Bohachina! How you feel um, about that boy putting up some Instagram? Getting you all hot and sweaty at night. I don't know. I He seems like a dirty MF fighter. Oh, what? The juice is losing Brazil, are you telling me? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, you're like, telling me oh, something you're I don't know. Oh, you're predicting that? Is that surprised. Speaking of, if you guys want to know something nasty, it has nothing to do with the juice being loose in Brazil. It's just um, in that same... The one... is That's not 170. That's 185. Nothing. It has nothing in common with it. <laughs> just Pet, some dirt. Let's just hear some dirt. Pettis first Wonder Boy talks. Have that's fun. I have heard that, at but that's Pettis, Pettis moving up from 55, even though he made weight at 55 and Kiesa didn't. And he made weight at 145. Ah, I don't like that. 170, that's such a joke. Delight. The striker's delight. Maybe. Pettis can go to the ground, a better ground game, but Thompson knows how to stay off of the ground. Woo, it's such a weird it's fight. It's a weird, I don't like it. I don't like it. I think Pettis has a lot of other fights at 55. 70, again, 65 is probably perfect for that bout right there. I don't know. Does Thompson be? Is he able to get down that low? I want Thompson to move up to one eighty five. Oh no! I think I think he becomes like a Luke. Um, I think you know how you rock hate, hold up there, but I, like with a better chin. I don't think so. I think how you hate John Jones' legs. I think that's Stephen Thompson's whole body. You got that chicken body. He's just long and lean, lean, lean. He's tall enough to move up. He's yeah, he's tall, tall enough, but he, he's got a twenty eight inch waist. I might be lying on that, but I'm pretty yeah, sure that's he's, true. Yeah, he's a thinner guy. He's a thin, thin guy. He's not built like Chris Weidman by any means. Like, if he were to get fat, it would be all in his belly. 
That guy would Which, not put it. Chris Weidman, he's a guy I'd love to move up to 205. Chris oh, Weidman versus Jones, that's a Chris fight Weidman right there. Chris Weidman 205 anywhere. I think he looks so much better at 205. I like Same his prospects up. I like I like all Agreed. those up there. Agreed. That's why it's weird for Wonder Boy. I just think talks of, the, of a guy that low, it's like so uh, Connor. Totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's weird. True. It's true. I'd even say throw Kevin Gastelum in there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's at 185 now, and he's doing all right up there. He's doing great at 185. Yeah, why isn't he going down to 155? He could lose it. If anyone, you know what? If he actually got into shape, he probably could he go could to 155. Not. He couldn't do it. 70, maybe. If but he went no to 155, he beats everybody in the division. But that's what if. That's a Brock Lesnar makes I know. That's what I'm too, saying about Silva versus Connor. <laughs> it's like that same shit. It's true. It's true. Okay. What Love about, um, did you see the video of removing the pins from Brian Ortega's thumb? I did. Uh, brutal. 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 That looked like it hurt. When did he, uh, did he show the punch or did he talk about when that yeah, happened? Yeah, I didn't even know when it happened. I didn't know that happened in the fight. Yeah, I agree. I didn't even know. I did see a cast. I didn't know what it was for, but... Woo, it's been I a while. I thought Gedalia did that. Oh, Whoa. turning, getting him a tap. <laughs> getting him a tap. Have you seen any other stuff? gadalia has been uh, really hitting that Instagram hard. And man, I've been crushing on Gedalia so for cute. a bit. She a cute little girly. All the way around. I love what she's turned into all the way around. She's cute. I like the way she's playing her part. Whatever part she's got going on, her shtick, I like it. I think it's like a sex kitten type thing, but like kind of tough. Like she could hold her, like sex kitten, and you turn your lights off, and then the sound of a panther's like, rah, rah, rah. Right. <laughs> you're like, but oh she shit. She doesn't turn show so on. much. It's not a Pearl Gonzalez. Yeah, she's not like whooping her titty nipple. She's out not Maganya. Yeah, yeah, no, no. She's not being nasty. It's just like. <laughs> what about this? She looks like 90s movie. high school like photos where you're like crouching yes. in the hall way like what up but quality photos yeah, she's yeah. actually getting quality photos um how do you feel about port Lu- port st lucy's own yeah the canadian snow queen i know you're talking gillian, about i always forget jamie gillian yeah. gillian anderson anderson is that right i, I think it's gillian the canadian queen herself throwing out her snowiness all over the florida coast she's one of those gillian? That, she Maybe wears the small bikinis how do you feel about that? I like her, but I don't even she's playing that Magana role a little about. bit. I don't. I haven't seen any of that. Red hair. Oh. I, I know who you're talking about. I haven't seen any of her naughty photos. I feel like, well, they're not naughty because it's her at the beach. She just likes to wear that floss on uh, the beach. She's flossing. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> she's like uh, mini, mini blessed flossing. Or the floss. I think it's just called the floss, not the flossing. Floss. So she's flossing. Yeah. She's definitely got some clean teeth, if you know what I mean. Um, pearly whites between who, there. <laughs> she got pearly whites. Well, <laughs> two big pearly white Two big cheeks. pearly whites right down the middle. Uh, who else is they going to bring up? Oh, um, what not Rose? P- PVZ, Paige Van Zant was on... Your favorite. Brennan Schaub. What is it called? Big Brown Breakdown? No. Below the Belt with Brennan Schaub. Wow. He's yeah. got so many... I know. Good for him. I know. I have so much entertainment a week. That's Brennan Job, <laughs> Fighter and the Kid, King of the Sting, <laughs> Below the Bell. I'm like, the Mirror. Jeez, I know. Boom, boom, I know, boom. you might have the sweatshirt. <laughs> I'm like, I, no, can, will you give me the bad. Brennan Job when I get my hair cut? <laughs> 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 I know. It's I guess all love. That's, it's it. all that's love. where it'll just end, I guess. <laughs> that's where it'll end. I don't know what'll be Wednesday. I'll try to I, I feel like we came prepared a little bit today. I agree. I think it's a fun one. We gave it to you. We almost gave you a full hour. You can't hate on that. Agreed. You agreed, can't agreed. hate on that. And make sure you like and subscribe. And if this is your first episode and you loved it, then um make sure you hit the bell so you get a notification. And if you hated it, then maybe you'll like it next time when we're breaking down a fight. Give us another chance. What kind of person are you? Give us a chance. <laughs> Give it a chance. Try it out. Try it out. Let's go to me! Thanks for listening to Let Be. For all things Lesbo and the Bean, head over to lesboandthebean.com or follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.